Governor Arthur M. Hyde said it best at the 1924 dedication of the new capital, remarking, It seems to not merely be a pile of inanimate stone and steel, but a living thing which speaks of the hopes of the pioneers and explorers in homespun and leather, whose feet first pressed the soil of this country and whose hands wrought from the wilderness the magnificent domain which is Missouri. Our capital is a living, breathing testament to our state and for our government. The real magic, however, is in the details. As our beloved capital undergoes renovation to repair a century's worth of weather damage and aging, we invite you to go on a virtual tour with us and learn more about one of the most unique parts of our capital, the Dome. The Dome is one of the prominent features of the Missouri Capitol, which is actually the third Capitol building to be constructed in Jefferson City, the two before it burned resulting in the stipulation that this Capitol be a fireproof building. And as such, it was constructed primarily of steel, brick, and stone. It does not become apparent until on the Dome Tour that the exterior dome houses within it an interior dome. The outer dome is constructed of limestone and brick over a steel superstructure, when beginning the over 200 stair trek to the top of the dome, visitors can read the names of many who walked before them, with signatures lining the interior walls of the exterior dome, including some dating back to the building's construction in 1917. The dome towers over 250 feet from the top to the basement floor, and is decorated with stunning artwork all around it. The first stop of the dome tour is the Whispering Gallery, a historical monument in and of itself. The gallery is special in its design. Conceived by New York-based architect firm Tracy and Swartout, much of the architectural acoustics were inspired by their Harvard physics professor Wallace Sabine. In a volume published posthumously, Sabine discussed the accidental creation of similar whispering galleries. He noted that the Missouri Capitol's whispering gallery was therefore the first of its kind designed with the intention of being a whispering gallery, making a unique mark in architecture. The Whispering Gallery is emblazoned with a quote from George Washington's farewell address. In proportion as the structure of a government gives force to public opinion, it is essential that public opinion should be enlightened. Above these words is where we stand, a circular landing where one can appreciate the whispering part of the gallery. If one whispers something from one side of the gallery, someone on the other side could hear it as if the two were directly next to one another. As mentioned, this design was the first one to be intentional. Above us are 12 stained glass windows created by Thomas Calvert of New York. These gorgeous windows house the names of 12 important Missourians from four different professions, education, medicine, journalism, and law. The windows were produced in groups of three in 1925 and 1926. The journalism side features Robert T. Van Horn, Joseph Charles, and Joseph Pulitzer. The three windows on the south side of the dome feature William B. Napton, James O. Broadhead, and Henry D. Geyer, all men of law. The three windows on the west side of the dome feature the doctors, William Beaumont, John T. Hodgen, and Bernard G. Farrar. Finally, the educators are on the east side of the rotunda, William Harris, Richard H. Jesse, and James Greenwood. Cast at the St. Louis Brass Company, the chandelier immediately draws the eye to the middle of the gallery. Installed in 1918, the chandelier weighs approximately 8,000 pounds and has seen many improvements over the years. In December 2006, it went back to the St. Louis-based company that originally created it, now called the St. Louis Antique Company, to be restored with the addition of floodlights to help illuminate the murals that surround it. The restoration occurred after the chandelier fell six feet that year during its annual cleaning. It is now back in its spot, now with new LED lights offering light that is less damaging to the murals above and below. The gallery underwent a restoration in 1973 after a group of concerned citizens worked to secure funding from the U.S. Department of Labor. The work included restoration of the artwork in the Whispering Gallery and the addition of seating on the interior of the dome. When looking straight up, you can see what's known as the Eye of the Dome. This mural was painted by Frank Brangwen, who also completed 13 other murals found in the lower and upper rotunda. This mural at the top has four figures with two attendants each, representing agriculture, commerce, science, and education. 
These symbols represent the driving forces of prosperity for the state of Missouri. When looking closely, one can also see the zodiac symbols painted amidst these figures. 160 feet above the third floor, this mural appears almost mosaic-like up close because of the blotting technique of the painter. As we move outside, we find that on the top of the Missouri Capitol stands Ceres, the Roman goddess of agriculture. Over 250 feet off the ground, the statue weighs more than two tons and is more than 10 feet tall. She was sculpted by New York-based artist Sherry Fry and was lifted in sections to the top of the Capitol with a pulley system in the year 1924. It is theorized that the bronze sculpture was modeled after Audrey Munson, a silent film star and the nation's first supermodel. Thank you for taking this virtual tour of the Dome with us. We hope you enjoyed all the sights of this magnificent part of the Missouri Capitol building. The artistry and craftsmanship that went into this area truly gives life to this building, and we hope you will visit it soon.